Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran here in Warren, Oregon. And this is a Sunday that we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. We are reading from Mark chapter 1 verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The story is told about the baptism of King Angus by St. Patrick in the middle of the 5th century. Sometime during the rite, St. Patrick leaned on his sharp pointed staff and inadvertently stabbed the king's foot. After the baptism was over, St. Patrick looked down at all the blood, realized what he had done, and begged the king's forgiveness. Why did you suffer this pain and silence? the saint wanted to know. The king replied, I thought it was part of the ritual. As with poor King Angus, we see in today's text that Jesus' baptism was also about what was done to him. The beginning of the book of Mark tells us about the baptism of Jesus. We start off with John calling people to repent and be baptized. They were choosing to confess that they were indeed sinful and in need of a thorough cleansing. They were then baptized as a symbol of that cleansing and new start. While this was happening, Jesus shows up and tells John he needs to be baptized. However, Jesus has no sin from which to turn. It is then that we see Jesus' baptism was not about what he was doing, but about what God was doing. It was the dawn of a new kind of baptism. It was also the inauguration of Jesus' ministry. Immediately after the baptism, we're told that Jesus was driven into the desert to face the temptations of Satan. He would need to be at his best. And so, as he's being baptized, we're told that the heavens were torn apart. Not that heaven opens, but it was torn apart. Some drama here. The Spirit of God descends on Jesus, and the voice of God declares, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now we notice two important details about the timing of this declaration. First, as far as Scripture tells us, Jesus has not heard directly from his Holy Father since he left heaven at the time of his birth 30 years earlier. And now God publicly blesses Jesus right before he faces a most intense time of trial. God affirms Jesus' ministry and his mission. God reminds Jesus that he's got his back as Jesus walks through the fire. Second, God makes this declaration to Jesus before Jesus has done anything to earn it. Jesus is about to start his ministry when God says, You are my beloved. 
God gives Jesus a Mr. Rogers moment. I like you for who you are. We need to remember this. Martin Luther said that when he was tempted to doubt, he would say, I am baptized. Not, I am a Christian, or I believe, but I am baptized. The strength of his faith was found in his baptism when God put his claim on Martin. You are a child of God. In today's world, we see people who are so desperate to be liked, to be claimed by someone. People become depressed if their Facebook post does not receive enough likes. They feel unloved if they do not have enough followers on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok with people who do not even know them. That is settling for cheap affirmation when one could have genuine acceptance, love, and identity as a child of God. Hear me well, my friends. When the boss says, we no longer need you here. When the husband or wife says, I found someone better than you. When the other kids say, you're a nobody. That is when we need to remember that God chose us. God called you in baptism. God put his claim on you. God filled you with his own Holy Spirit. God says, I've got your back no matter what the world throws at you. There may be times that this message seems like all you have to hang on to, but it is enough. God has your back no matter what. When we speak of Christian baptism, we speak of it as a new beginning. However, the day of your baptism was also the day you died. Romans 6 verses 3 through 5. Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. And Colossians 2 verse 12, having been buried with Christ in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. In one of John Illifsacher's hymns, he wrote, you can't kill me, I've already died. We die in baptism, but we rise up to new life in Christ. This promise has sustained Christians throughout the centuries. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer was led to his death, he said to one of the prison guards, For some, this is the end, but for me, it is the beginning. Bonhoeffer had died long ago in his baptism, and soon he would live in all fullness his new life. In the baptismal liturgy, we vow to renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises. We mark the end to that old life and begin to live a life in God's grace and forgiveness. Then we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the, cro the cross of Christ forever. God redeems us by calling us to renounce our sinful way. Once we repent of our sinful ways, God restores us to fullness in him. And then as we keep turning back to the world, he renews us through the presence of his Holy Spirit. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. 
As Jesus went about his ministry of casting out unclean spirits, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and welcoming the outcast, he was living out his baptism. He was passing on what he had received. Jesus was telling others in word and deed that they too are beloved children of God with whom God is well pleased. One of my cadets from my previous employment at the Youth Challenge Academy went into the Air Force. Danny did so well that he was chosen for the Presidential Honor Guard. When the president walks past him, Danny snaps to attention, clicks his heels, and salutes. Sometimes he's ignored. Occasionally, the president may nod in acknowledgement. It's the same procedure every time Danny is on duty. The president walks by, Danny snaps to attention, clicks his heels, and salutes. The relationship is stiff, formal, technical, with eyes never looking the president in the eye, only straight ahead, frozen like a wooden soldier. But imagine one day the president stops in front of Danny and says, please follow me into my office. He closes the door, orders the airman to be seated, looks him in the eye and says, I want you to become one of my children. I want you to become part of our family. I want you to come to our family outings, our family picnics, the family birthday parties, the family Christmases. I want you to become part of our family. Wow. <laughs> In that moment, the relationship between the president and the young airman is totally transformed. It has changed from formal, stiff, and distant to close and loving. That is precisely what happens to us in our baptism. It is God who takes the initiative, and the relationship is totally transformed. Baptism is the fantastic invitation from God to know us intimately and closely, so closely that we are called son or daughter, that we become family. So please repeat after me. I am a beloved child of God. With me, God is well pleased. My baptism is the promise of God that he will never let me go. Did you say it? At your darkest moment, remember that the God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same one who promised you in your baptism to always love and accept you as a beloved child. Thanks be to God. Amen.